Wonderful to have you on the show today, Adam. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks so much, Katie. It's a pleasure to be here. Really excited about today's topic. We spoke a bit about it off air right now. And I'd love to dive in straight into the core concept of design thinking. And I know you work a lot with design thinking, mostly UX, etc. But I'm curious, how do you feel we could apply maybe the mindset or the process of design thinking to entrepreneurship, for example? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, look at its at its core, design thinking is it's a mindset. Uh, it's also a process. Um, you know, it has pretty defined stages and steps. Um, so in that way, it can be applied to almost anything in your life. I, I mean, I've almost like thought of design thinking my life at times. Okay, um, okay, let's dive but... into that. It's crew just entrepreneurship. How do you design think your life? <laughs> think it's yeah, on another sure. spectrum. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, it, it always starts with uh, user problems, right? So, um, you know, you really have to start uh, thinking intrinsically, maybe about your own life, thinking about the the problems that you might be having, kind of conducting your own user research about yourself, and then the things um, that exist within it. And, um, and then, of course, you know, the next stage is really um, coming up with some potential solutions, right? So, um, as we've finished this discovery, we've gathered some insights. Now we need to come up with solutions to our problems. But the design thinking mindset is always about um, curiosity and knowing that we don't have all the answers to the problems. And so we have to test them, right? And so as we start to apply these solutions, we're kind of testing them out. We're not sure if they're going to, to work. And if they do work, great. Like that's, all right, we're going to adapt that. That's how our life will go on. But if, if it's not working, we may want to change the solution and try a different approach, right? So um, this kind of idea applies, of course, to your life, but it can also equally apply to the business that you're running. You know, as you go through the different stages of entrepreneurship, you know, you have lots of learnings along the way. I think anybody who started a business, you know, can't help but think about how little they knew when they first started and how much they might know now. And um, I think if you start to take this curiosity, curious mindset of design thinking, where you can always think about something as a user problem and then and frame it that way, and then try to, you know, um, try different solutions, see what works and be willing to adapt and pivot, right? This is like, um, I think essential to any entrepreneur, like anybody who gets stuck in a particular, um, you know, mode of thinking, Um frankly, like a bit, you know, business talk about pivoting all the time, right? Um, if you don't have that mindset and be have the willingness to take that, that risk of maybe changing a direction, I think that's why a lot of businesses end up failing. So I don't know, I found it to be useful in both my, my personal life, you know, my business, and then of course, the work that I do, uh, you know, or my company does for clients. Yes, I guess it's something I do without necessarily labeling it design thinking. It's all about experimenting, see what the problem is, trial, fail, rebound, learn, experiment again, etc. But it's true what you were saying that many businesses fail to innovate or pivot or try something new because they're used to doing it that way, especially if it kind of is working. Like if it's not working at all, it's a red flag and you need to do something about it. But if it's yeah. sort of working, out, oh, this will do. But wait a minute, it could be this great. Why are we settling for here? I've I'm definitely guilty of that. I've definitely seen things that semi work and I'm just like, no, I need to find like a better version system, whether it's a system process in place or people I work with or how I work with them or whatever it is, it's like, wait a minute, this would be a way better way of doing things. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, kind of I think that's also one of the big principles around um design thinking is like trying to get to the best possible solution as opposed to like accepting maybe a mediocre uh, solution. So yeah, I agree. Amazing. And what's like one area in your life maybe that you'd like to share where you specifically applied design thinking and what the outcomes were of that? Oh boy. Um, trying to think of something like off the top of my head. Um yeah, I I remember I had a really good story off the bat, and and I'm now like forgetting it because I had told it one time a long time ago. Um, I wish I had a good one for you off the top of my head. Um, I'll prepare one for the next time. 
or if it comes to you as we speak. But overall, <laughs> what you're saying is this feels to me like it's a mindset and process that you apply quite often. So it's sort of maybe one of your default ways of thinking. Yeah, I guess like one of the areas that I've tried to apply um, deep thinking and maybe even design thinking, you know, is really designing my life. Um, you know, one of the things, um, and I know this is a topic we'll talk about in much more depth, um, that I heard a long time ago from a, a friend of mine that I actually coincidentally met uh, at a conference. And he was telling me that, you know, he is moving his entire family to Spain. And I was pretty shocked by that because he was he was moving from South Africa, which is, you know, pretty far away place, um, all the way to, to Spain, uh, you know, a language that his, he and his family did not know. Um, a culture that was new to them, uh, job prospects were unknown and uncertain to them. And he was, I was like, why are you doing it? He was like, well, I'm designing my life. And I'm like, that's really interesting. Like, tell me more. Like, what does that mean? And, um, and so as I got into it with him, he said, well, look, you know, I want to find a place where um, I can live year round. The weather is going to be great. Um, it needs to be safe for me and my family. He found that South Africa was increasingly unsafe. I need a place where my job prospects are going to be stronger than where, where I'm at. Um, I want a place where I can still be near the ocean um, because I really enjoy that. That's a big part of my life. Um, I want a place where I can also work remotely and um, have access to the rest of the world and be more accessible and be able to travel more easily. Um, you know, and all these things got me thinking like, wow, like maybe I need to design my life. I, I feel like, you know, this is a reset moment. You know, at the time I was working in New York City, uh, I was, uh, you know, doing the nine to five or nine to six thing. Maybe it wasn't even nine to six, like, you know, more like nine to eight <laughs> thing. And, um, you know, getting on the subway every day. And I always had this desire to travel and maybe become a digital nomad and, you um, and, you know, eventually uh, also start my own business. And um, and after meeting him, I was actually at that pivotal point where I was on the verge of like deciding whether or not I should start a business because um, I had been doing a lot of talks. And afterwards, you know, people would come up to me and say, hey, that's an amazing talk. And it was actually about design thinking and helping apply it in businesses. And um, like, can you come do this for me? And I was always like, well you know, I have a job, I'm not sure, but it kind of was like the impetus to get me to start thinking about starting my own business. And, um, you know, he really tipped me over the edge and helped me, you know, move forward um, and really start thinking about designing the life that I wanted. And, um, you know, it took me about five or six years to really truly get to that point. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I've now achieved some semblance of that. Amazing. And as we were spoken off air before, you did live in Mallorca. You are living <laughs> it. You are doing it. And it's so wonderful when you can remember when that was still just a dream, still just a concept, still just a possibility. <laughs> like, but I actually did it. <laughs> it's a yeah. wonderful feeling. It, it, yeah, it, it's very rewarding. And, um, you know, I think it's really important to set goals for yourself and um, and I truly believe that, um, you know, people should should design their lives. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, going back to the design thinking, you know, kind of theme here, you know, I examined what my user problems were, what were the things that I was kind of lacking in my life that I wanted to get more of. And um, I figured out what those things are. I set them as achievable goals. I came up with potential solutions to solve those problems. And some of them worked, some of them didn't, some of them I adapted. And, um, and you know, now here I am, it's been six and a half years since I first started my business. And, you know, look, not everything is perfect just yet, but um, but a lot of the dreams that I had hoped to achieve, um, which included um, more um, financial freedom, more um, ability to travel and see the world, um, more ability to work from anywhere I wanted, ability to live in a place that um, might be a different climate, um, you know, uh, or a place that um, maybe didn't have all the opportunities as the other places I had, but I could still do the same work I was doing. Um, yeah, I just, overall, it just gave me much more fulfillment um, and uh, joy in my life. And so, you know, I, I feel like I've achieved a lot of those goals 
Um, and you know, still there's always new goals to, to, uh, push towards. Yes. There's always goals to push towards. And I love when you said that not everything was perfect yet. And I was thinking, hmm, I wonder if anything can ever be always perfect in one's own <laughs> business. Right. I mean, we can see life as a yeah. whole sometimes can feel perfect when things are aligned, but definitely if I think of business, it's not because as soon as you reach the next stage, you already see the next. So it's a yeah. growth and progress. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is indeed yeah i know you're really passionate about this topic of remote working so maybe you can share a bit of your insights like how does this actually work for you when you're living abroad how do you manage to build your social network have your routines uh, continue your work when it's uh, sunny and there's palm trees outside how do you maintain <laughs> like a good sort of uh, work habits routines processes in spite of moving around and being in different locations yeah, yeah, great question. I mean, you know, I'll be honest, it took a little time to get used to it. I remember when I first started the business, it was 10 a.m. I was like, man, I, I'm going to go like to do like a yoga class this morning. Like I I don't have to go to work right now, right? Like I, I did the things I was supposed to do, I think, and I'm going to go to do this. And I was walking to the class and I had this absolute dread you know this feeling of like oh my god like i need to be working right now what am i doing going to like a yoga class i, I really didn't allow myself like the freedom that i just had you know kind of unlocked for myself and um you know i kind of i'll never forget that moment but i will say that it did kind of help me start to think about how i need to structure my myself right how how i would be working in my company and for me it was never about the time that you were working right it wasn't about not being at work at 10 a.m right it was more about being able to achieve goals right and so and i i still maintain that to this day and i maintain that with my my staff we we do have working hours like we we set a very specific um schedule where all of us need to work um you know, together uh, in collaborative sessions, but then there's uh, uh, pretty much half the day for across multiple time zones from, you know, uh, Los Angeles, or from California all the way to Europe, um, where people are working independently, right? And um, some of them cross over in those time zones and some of them don't, right? They just work independently. They don't need to work with each other at those times. And so for me, the way that I've um, decided to like structure my days is depending on the time zone I'm in, because I do travel so much, um, I try to make sure that there are four day, four hours a day that are blocked off for meetings. These can be internal meetings or for, um, external meetings. I don't allow, you know, scheduling unless I'm in the, a very, you know, um, you know, stable place for a long time with a very specific time zone. Um, you know, I don't allow, uh, meetings to be scheduled beyond that. Like, no, there won't be five meetings in a day. There'll be maximum four, right. If they're each an hour long or maybe eight if they're each, you know, half an hour long, right? Um, and so that's kind of like how I structure it. I know that I'll have four hour blocks to work, you know, no matter what time zone I'm in. Now, the rest of the time, uh, I'm structuring my day based on, you know, the, the quantity of work that needs to be done, right? And now that I've been doing the business for a while, I know what work needs to be done. Um, we have very specific goals. I know how much time I'll need to, to achieve those goals. I'm not a big believer in like the hustle culture of like, you need to be at work at 6 a.m., you know, and be there until 12 p.m. every single night grinding. Like, I don't know, like, I just don't believe in that philosophy. Like, that's like the Elon Musk school of thought. I'm not into it, right? Um, I've found a lot of success doing this. You know, maybe I'm not going to be a billionaire like Elon Musk, but I live a very comfortable life and I'm very lucky. And, um, you know, for me, that's what success looks like. Right. Um, so, um, so yeah, you know, that kind of, hopefully that gives you a little insight into like my kind of mindset and how I structure things. You know, I do have goals. I do have, um, a schedule every day, every day can be a little bit structured slightly differently, but I help hold myself accountable to get work done. I hold my team accountable to get work done in a reasonable amount of time, the amount of time that I think it should take to get something done. And as long as I set those goals for them and I check in and I, I monitor their work, if they need to go and, you know, do a yoga class during the day, 
great, go do that. Like if they need to go to a doctor's appointment or pick up their kids from school, right? Or maybe they just need a little me time, whatever it is, right? We allow them to have the flexibility to go do those things, right? But those who take advantage, like we know very quickly that that's happening, right? We're not idiots, right? Because we're always checking in, making sure that the work is getting done. Um, so yeah, that's kind of our philosophy and it's, it's honestly been my philosophy and it's something I've, I've really worked hard at to help, um, you know, structure for my team. And it certainly can have, um, benefits and drawbacks, which we can talk about in more depth, but, um, you know, so far it's, it's worked well for us. Yes. I love this philosophy of outcome-based versus time-based. I think if we force ourselves to work a certain amount of hours, how many of those hours are we actually going to be productive versus, okay, here's actually what I need to do and here's the time allocated. Can I make it fit? And less? will it take a bit more, a bit of flexibility around it? And also energy-wise, because I noticed that sometimes my energy is super high and so I'll do a la, 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 la. And then sometimes it's slow and then sometimes things happen in life or I have, you know, a tough coaching session. I need some recoup time and then I'm not going mm -hmm. to force myself to write another blog article. Right. It's just like it just <laughs> doesn't fit. And then the energy of it, reaching out to yeah. a client, the blog article, a LinkedIn post, whatever it is, is just not good if your energy is a bit off. So then it's go to yoga class or for a walk. But I could definitely I was laughing because I can so resonate with that guilt. I took um, singing classes for a while on Friday lunches. And so then sometimes I would take Friday afternoon off. And I so I would manage my whole week so that that whole afternoon was off. And I was like, I can't believe I'm cycling to my singing lesson at 12. <laughs> and it, it just felt so like, and I was like, no, but I actually did everything I needed to do. And it was yeah. actually a really nice transition between work and then switching off for the weekend. So it was quite good. Though I have been happy to have my Fridays back for work also because I realized that my Fridays were a little calmer which is why it was easier for yeah. me to take them off but they were a great day for reflection review my whole mm -hmm. week reaching out clients preparing my content for the following week so I was like it's kind of also good to work on Friday Saturday <laughs> they're both good but we need flexibility Absolutely. yeah I couldn't agree more about like you know finding those pockets of energy you know it's it's hard because you know especially as an entrepreneur, you know, you, you got to keep yourself motivated. There's, there's a lot of times where like things are going bad, right? Frankly, you know, and you're trying to deal with a lot and it takes a huge mental toll on you. And that can really be a hit towards your motivation. And so I think there's like, there's a few things that I do, you know, I think exercise or like having other outlets to be able to ease your mind and focus on other things. Um, is definitely like one thing that really helps. I mean, certainly exercise is just one of them, but it could be anything, right? Meditation, it could be singing classes, whatever you like, right? Uh, do a hobby, um, you know, and I think those definitely give you the energy and me mental space to be able to, you know, go attack the day. And then another thing, I was literally talking to my my wife about this yesterday. I was like, I actually like to get dressed up, right? I, I actually, even though I'm sitting here you know, in my home, in my office, and I could probably be wearing, you know, my underwear right now for all I, all you guys know. Um, you know, I, I actually do try to get dressed up um, every day for work. And it just completely shifts my mindset um, and allows me to just feel really good about myself and feel like I'm ready to kind of like tackle a day and go to work. So, you know, small tricks that I think are helpful, especially for those of us who work from home. Yes, definitely working from home. I mean, this is one of the reasons I do work from like a co-working space because it makes me yeah. dress up every day, be in a different space, commute there. And also 200% on what you were saying around meditation, exercise, so important. And I feel in general that as entrepreneurs and business owners, we must take care of our mental health, therefore our physical mm. health, they're related. Because if you yes. don't, it's like you said, when things go bad, it's not like, it's not like if you're employed and you've got your salary coming in every month, you have a bit of a rough patch, you you work a bit less, probably nothing will happen, right? It depends, but from, and then yeah. you just go up again. But as a business owner, you can't be like, oh, well, I don't feel like it or get sick for three weeks or <laughs> yeah. get super demotivated. And I'm like, no, this is just not happening. So as soon as I feel I might get sick, I'm like lemon and ginger galore. I go to bed super <laughs> early. I get up a bit later. I'm like better miss two yeah. hours of work than two two weeks, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And so it, there's a higher consciousness or how you value on 
physical health and mental health. I think what you have. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and it's, um, you know, I think obviously important to take care of yourself, um, by doing things for yourself. But, you know, I think one of the things that I also did, you know, probably about, it took me three, three years to really realize this. And, and frankly, we were at a, a, a crossroads in the business where we were starting to actually earn, you know, a little bit of extra money. And I was like, wow, I'm finally at the point where I might be able to make my first hire, which is a huge decision for a business. And it just felt so overwhelming. I'm like, do we have enough? Am I taking a huge risk? I'm playing with somebody's life here. I need to like consider this deeply when I'm making this hire, because what if I can't pay them? You know, like what if the business does poorly? Oh, like there were just so many emotions around it. And um, I ended up deciding to hire like a business consultant to help me really analyze our business and determine like the health of it and determine if we truly had enough money to afford this and if it was like a worthy risk. And, um, you know, this person helped me figure that out. That was problem number one. Um, but, you know, as it turns out, you know, there were a lot of issues that we needed to resolve inside of the business. And then I maintained this relationship with this person. And even to this day, we meet once a week to discuss business challenges. And it's almost like it's part like, um, of course, like strategic. And, and we obviously do a lot of work together and it helps move the business forward. But it's also kind of like part, you know, um, therapy session where I can like let go of a lot of my emotions and also let someone to that's not as um, going to be as biased and critical to like think critically about the scenarios that we're going through and let me not get emotional about them and make emotional decisions um and which you know I made many mistakes um by making emotional decisions in the business so I really encourage people who start a business to maybe even consider finding that type of person early on and investing in that uh, relationship, because I, I do think that it is incredibly impactful. Yes. I mean, yes, obviously. I mean, I also work as a coach. So I help people with these types of things, but also I have worked with so many coaches, maybe eight or nine mm. by now. And I mean, I would, there's no way I'd be where I am. I mean, I probably would have quit. <laughs> Yeah, if yeah. I didn't have someone like holding my hand, be like, "This is the next step," and congrats, that was great. And me being like, "Why is nothing working?" And then they'd be yeah. like, "I remember my coach, uh, Louisa is amazing. If Louisa, if you're listening to this, that I've recommended to many people, Louisa Ferrario, amazing coach. And I remember her telling me at one point where I was going through a rough patch, and and me saying, "But why? You know, didn't it work for so long, etc." And she said, "But maybe you needed this phase." to prepare you for what's coming next. And I thought, oh, yeah, I didn't see it that way. And then it's true that when things, everything picked up a lot, there was a phase where I felt overwhelmed because I had too much work, right? It's like always <laughs> the juggle of like, nothing's coming in. Oh my God, I'm both bored and stressed out. And then too much is coming in. I'm overwhelmed. I'm grateful too, but I'm overwhelmed. It anyway, is so that, that phase, balance. <laughs> I remembered what she said and I was like, oh yeah, that prepared me for this because now in this phase of overwhelm I'm able to shift to gratitude and be like wow I'm thankful I have too much on my plate this is amazing and then I just need to manage yeah. it so what did help isn't that the roller coaster of running a business and uh both why it's so awesome and so challenging at the same time but I don't know it's like a drug for me and I I love it you know yeah, same, same. And I feel it's a balance of so many things all the time. I was I was thinking about the balance of overconfident underconfidence things pick up and then you become almost sometimes overconfident and then something hits and then suddenly that confidence that you build and then suddenly you're like underconfident built with self-doubt again and you're like can't I meet like confident and humble regularly <laughs> that's not, that's not a thing. yeah absolutely anyway just to wrap up I mean I love this topic and we deviated a bit from remote working but we stayed on like entrepreneurship what would you recommend to people who are maybe thinking of taking that leap that you took years ago so aside from hiring a business consultant or a coach which I agree is an amazing investment of time energy and money but aside yeah. from that what would you recommend them to do if they maybe want to 
explore a bit more, be open to this idea of remote working and traveling, maybe having their own business, like speak to the Adam who was on the verge <laughs> all those years ago. Well, I, I suppose I'd give myself the advice, you know, people gave me, which was like, you just got to try, right? Um, you know, what what is, I think one of the biggest hurdles for people to get past is, well, what happens if I fail? Like, Failure feels like the, almost like the end of the world um, to, to, I think, a lot of people. And it's one of the reasons people don't start to begin with um, is the fear of failure. And um, I think, you know, for somebody who may be, uh, you know, embarking on entrepreneurship for the first time, you know, look, you should be calculated about it. Don't be an idiot. Don't jump into things that you can't financially afford. I always tell people, make sure you've got like six to eight months you know, of money saved in the bank and like a very clear like strategy and runway of like your approach to doing this. And like, if at the end of this period, let's say like you've got eight months saved, you know, or let's say nine months saved and you you say, all right, well, if at the end of six months, I can't do this, like like the, the business is failing, I'm going to stop and have three months that I can go find a job with the savings that I got, right? Um, and so, you know, that's, I know, very tall order for somebody to save eight months worth of salary or like living expenses. Um, and so being, you know, prepared for that moment, I think is critically important and not being irresponsible about it. Um, you know, the second thing, as I said before, is really being willing to take that risk, right? And so the first step is just, I think, putting yourself out there and trying. And then as you go, you're likely going to make some pivots. When I first started the business, we were kind of more of a consultancy. We were helping training people um, on design thinking and teaching teams how to apply it in their organizations. We we're doing workshops and stuff. We pivoted actually to doing um, you know, product design work and applying design thinking in an agency environment. And then three and a half years later, even though we did that very successfully, we had to do another pivot and now we actually offer staffing, recruiting, and studio services for UX talent, right, that companies want to hire. So those are like three very different businesses. And we have pivoted two times in our, you know, year, six and a half years. And we've reached a point where now the business is, you know, I think thriving or at least growing. Um that we never would have achieved had we not taken those risks. So, you you know, if you're going in the entrepreneurship, you know, pool, be ready to make lots of changes and be open-minded about um, taking, you know, sometimes big risks. Yes, sometimes regularly big risks. And it often feels to me like I'm pivoting every five seconds. I have to keep that balance. <laughs> Again, it's the whole balance thing of stay a while in one lane to really try it out. And then pivot and then spend a while in that lane and really try it out and not change all yes. the time, which is another risk. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Amazing. Thank you so much, Adam. This has been wonderful. Really enjoyed our interview. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Katie. I really appreciate you having me.